Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 13th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. After recording yesterday's podcast, Adobe, of course, did release some patch Tuesday updates. After all, the updates are addressing vulnerabilities in Acrobat Reader, Cold Fusion Commerce, and Dimension. For Cold Fusion, four of the vulnerabilities that they are patching here have a CVSS score of 9.8. Eight. Now, Adobe Commerce and Magento, uh, there is a cross-site scripting vulnerability with a perfect CVSS score of 10.0. Apply the patches soon, but Adobe does not consider an exploit for any of the patches likely soon. Horizon 3 published some details assisting FortiGate customers with the detection of CVE 2022-4684 exploit attempts. Now, this is the vulnerability that was patched on Friday after FortiGate detected the vulnerability being exploited in the wild. Make sure that you are updating. Horizon 3 has not yet uh, included details how to exploit this vulnerability, uh, but they did promise a proof of concept exploit for later this week in a separate blog post. So it's certainly uh, coming. There are additional uh, vulnerabilities that uh, FortiGate patched uh, today. Uh, they include uh, some authenticated uh, code execution flaws and a patch for a weakness in the sort of authentication uh, brute force detection. Nothing quite as critical as the one released on Friday, but yep, uh, keep your FortiGate devices updated. And VPN service uh, Mulvat VPN uh, published a blog post outlining how some traffic does escape a VPN connection on Android, even if the block connections without VPN feature is selected. The issue here appears uh, to be a little bit more of a documentation issue where uh, maybe that setting uh, should be clarified a bit. But uh, the traffic that's not using the VPN, for example, is connectivity checks. Uh, this tends to be a little bit tricky uh, with uh, devices in particular like you know, myself for example i know at a hotel uh, there is often sort of a portal that i have to log in or such and uh, these connectivity checks they basically detect that well uh, i need to log in first in order to get in that connectivity so uh, they have to happen before the VPN is established. And uh, NTP traffic, interestingly, also appears not to be using the VPN. But Android isn't alone here. iOS also has some issues keeping traffic inside VPNs and uh, users may not really be aware of what's using the VPN, what's not using the VPN. That has been an ongoing issue in the last couple of months where there were some reports like this. Once a user starts the VPN, for example, the VPN application is not able to terminate existing uh, connections to make sure that they're then being reestablished uh, via the VPN. So they may be exposed. Also, it appears that some, not all, but some of Apple's own applications are not using VPNs. That, for example, includes applications like Maps and the Health application. Also, the Find My application apparently does not use the VPN. Now, the data is itself encrypted by the application, but also DNS traffic apparently created by these applications is not protected by the VPN. Aruba today published an advisory addressing some weaknesses. Well, that sounds sort of very familiar for this kind of product, sadly. Uh, first of all, we got two vulnerabilities in Aruba Edge Connect Enterprise Orchestrator, leading to an authentication bypass for the web management interface. And secondly, an unauthenticated remote code execution in Aruba, Aruba Edge Connect Enterprise Orchestrator all in the web-based management interface. And uh, well, imagine that Aruba recommends that you don't expose those interfaces, the CLI and the web-based interface uh, to the public. Well, and that's it uh, for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again.
tomorrow. Bye.